Woo! I don't think that crack matched the woo, but <laughs> we'll give you a, a, a last crack for the for the last crack of uh, of Say mid crack season again. of meat, mid season meatloaf. Corey over there is the sensitive ears. He was like, oh. my uh, my eyes are watering at the moment from that woo. That woo was hot. Well, I got places to go, so. Well, I, no, we're, we're all do. revved up with no place to go. That's the thing. But I have places you, to go. But you live here. I do live here. I, this is my house. <laughs> you got nowhere to go. You're right. You're right. You're right. If I leave, I'm taking Brad. <laughs> taking Brad. He's keeping Brad. If we split up, he's keeping Brad. Brad was a gift. I'm keeping it. We stole him. It was a gift from the gas station in the Indy 500. Hundredth running in the Indy 500. That's a commemorative item. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that that first after show we ever did? Go check that out. I don't remember, but anyhow. Well, we're going to hit the... We saved the best for last. Going to hit you with a little Amari Cooper and some Cowboys. But first, we just had a new Patreon member sh- uh, sign up. Yeah, is this thing live? Are we going? Is this is thing live? Yeah. <laughs> I, while we were recording here, while we are doing our thing live, we just had a Patreon member join the group here. And uh, our boy Jared pops in here, and it took him 10... He, he signed up, and... Ten minutes later, he gets his first question in. I want to read it to you just so you know what's going on over here on the Patreon community page. He says, hey, guys, I'm in a 10-team full PPR league. I wouldn't consider myself in the running for a ship this year, barring some crazy luck. That's a championship. Right. I really need some extra help at RB for next year. I currently have Geis, Mark Ingram, Duke Johnson, Smallwood, Buck Allen, Ito Smith, Chase Edmonds, Wayne Gallman, Chris Warren, and Jalen Samuels on Taxi Squad. I just got offered... Uh, I got offered Dak Prescott, Dalvin Cook, Latavius Murray handcuff and for my Deshaun Watson and two 2019 first. I have um, a pretty late first as well. Uh, I, sh- I got two 2019 first. One of them should be late, and then mine is maybe in the mid-range towards the end. So do you think that's too much to give for Dalvin Cook and his inj- because of the injuries he had? Also, just so you know, I got Cam Newton, so Watson is my backup. Thanks for any input. So this is something that we're going to be getting on in uh, in the Patreon show. We're going to talk to uh, talk about this amongst ourselves with uh, with with Jared here, hitting him back, talking. What to up, him about, Jared? Appreciate the uh, the question. Appreciate the uh, stats with the uh, league breakdown a little bit and the roster breakdown. Obviously, he didn't go into wide receivers or anything like that, but he's talking running backs, and he's got a quarterback for quarterback. Speaking my language. Backs. We can talk running backs, <laughs> and we can talk first-round picks, and well, it's right up our alley. Cowboys just traded a first-round pick yeah, they for did. Amari Cooper. That's how do I feel about that? Solid transition. It's called the segue. I, uh, <laughs> I like the move for the Cowboys. Uh, did you have any more? Sorry, Vinco. No, no, that's All that's right. it. I wanted to, I wanted our listeners to hear those types of things. We're, you know, we had again, like we said to start the show, we had an amazing turnout last week after we, you know, told you guys that we uh, we needed a little more help over there. Some some you know five dollar hollers, buy us a coffee every month, and and a couple people actually uh, up their holler. They gave us some, we, a bunch of people gave us their holler, and we had a couple people that were already hollering at us up their ante a little bit and right. to show the appreciation. Gotta it was definitely a it was a big week for us on Patreon as far as getting new members of the Patreon family over there. We're grateful for all you guys and our listeners that haven't yet come over to Patreon, but. Uh, if if you're if this is your first time listening to the show, what happened last week is we got DM'd about someone was mad at us about basically talking about Patreon and and talking too much about it, and so what we did was talk even more about it, <laughs> and we got rewarded by people coming and joining. So sure. sorry, buddy, but we're gonna have to talk about Patreon just a little bit. Just but a it's just bit. such a cool a community like you, you, you can you can go check out patreon.com slash the ff dynasty you can see different posts that we've made some of them are public most of them are private what you can't see if you're not a member is the community tab and that's really where people are getting in all their questions and we're creating shows around these questions and so far we've been able to answer pretty much every one of them that won't always be the case but right now we're, we're, we're not able so to. big sure. that we can basically answer everybody's questions. And other people are getting in there that listen to us and are in the, in the same like-mindedness. And, uh, people and helping people. Answering each other's people questions. People helping people. Right. right. That's so what good it is. When he, when he jokes around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, joking around. That, there's on <laughs> that community so page. Jokes. <laughs> jokes around. There's people joking around. 
We got full discussions going on about roster management. We got serious trade questions as we were reading one earlier. And, you know, that's you're not signing up to talk amongst yourselves, even though we want our Patreon members to join to have a community amongst themselves as part of us with it, you know, together. You know, so like we want people to chime in like they're doing, but you're not just you know, I've heard people say that the other, some of the other people that they support through Patreon, they don't have that type of interactiveness that we have been given to our people, and it, it means a lot to us. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Uh, I saw you, uh, saw you on the dance floor out there. Hell of a dancer. <laughs> I told you, I was showing off. It's an <laughs> idiot to show off. No, well, I, know I know you're lying. <laughs> no, I know you're lying through your teeth. You and me both know I'm a fantastic Phenomenal dancer. Phenomenal dancer. <laughs> Phenomenal dancer. <laughs> Anyhow, he was whipping her around. It was, he was dancing. It's probably choreographed, but whatever. What well, obviously did choreograph, but he's definitely, you can't fake those moves. <laughs> nah, you can't moves. fake that. He's got rhythm. He's a big guy with good moves. Yeah. Kind of like Amari Cooper. Right. <laughs> Another segue. Second segue. Second, <laughs> second segue. <laughs> second try. <laughs> second try here. Uh, so we don't need to talk about Amari Cooper being good, right? That like well, I, when we look at his college dominator and his breakout could you, could age. You just read me those real quick. <laughs> I'm pretty sure his college dominator was in the 93rd percentile, and his college dominator is in the 99th percentile. All right, well there it is. I'm jacking off right now. Whoa, we're not too much. We're not really way too much. We're not too really. Much. In that I'm was, just quoting that was, verbatim. That was uh, that was way too far. That was, that was Jay Wayne's best Matt Kelly <laughs> impersonation. That was way but, too far. The college dominator and the uh, breakout age. Is we don't even I, need to talk about it. What anymore. else do you need to know? What, what, we, we could just move on. We could just end the show. He's obviously. So how about ever. how about we segue into his NFL dominator rating? Because when his when his rookie year he got 130 targets, caught 72 of them for a thousand yards, six touchdowns. His second year he comes back with 132 targets, a better catch rate, catches 83 of them, 1150 yards, five more touchdowns, and he's doing things that nobody's ever done at the, at the wide receiver position at his age. So now by the age of 22, he's got two Pro Bowls under his belt too. Right. And 155 catches. That's quick math. On but my now part. he's no good. It was made easy though. Seven and eight. Everybody knows that's 15 and two and five is three. 155 catches. Right. I, I agreed. And I mean, he, yes, you can With point the to math the math. You can point to the draft. <laughs> you can point to the drops. You can point to whatever you want, whether you like Amari or not like Amari. Most and, drops and, since he's entered the league of any wide receiver. But he's up. But the, in those two seasons, he was the best receiver ever to grace his presence in the league <laughs> up until uh, right. Odell had come in. And, and I think Jarvis uh, also was. Well, Odell started it he was the in catch. 2014, but he was a little older. He wasn't as it, right. Amari's thing was his age. How young he was, right? And sure. Odell's thing was just first year in the league. Sure. Amari still he's this is his fourth year. My man's 23 years old. 24. He's 24. Just turned 24, 24 in June. Yeah. A young 24. Bill Polian said he's uh, still serviceable at his age. Young man's like he's 24. Not 24. He's mm-hmm. a young man's 24. Anyway, so you, for reference, he's still younger than Kenny Galladay. Right. So you can point to the drops and if you don't like him because a you may have drafted him kind of high or you really liked him and he hasn't performed for you and over the last two years when you expected him oh the third year will break out or the this year where he was going to be really good you can point to many things the drops or whatever but i mean any guy who goes from having 10 targets to one or two or zero a game is is going to struggle yeah. uh, you can't say that you know, this guy isn't talented. He's not a very good player. Uh, if you give him the ball and you give him his touches, he's probably going to go to the Pro Bowl. Um, no, literally, he had two targets through two weeks. Right. And then in week three against Cleveland, he goes 11 targets for 128 yards on eight catches and a touch. And then the next week, he gets two catches on five targets. And then the next week, he has 10 targets, caught all 10 for a buck 16. And the next week, he has one catch on three targets. Right. Like there's, I've never seen as much up and down usage without somebody. Obviously, he got the concussion and against the Rams. Well, hold on, because I think you're reading those backwards. That was he got the concussion against the Seahawks. Oh, right. I'm reading them upside down. So, I'm my bad. Yeah, I was looking at a different stat and I was like, "What? He played Cleveland in week yeah, two. Good, good catch, Jay. Shout man. out to I, the dyslexic people. Out right, there. right. Yeah. I read yeah. those stats by in reverse order. My bad. The, the, uh, he got concussed last week against Seattle, not against the Rams in week one. That's my good catch. Good catch. My bad. But regardless, your point is still valid. It's it's baffling the back and forth uh, target share that he was getting. Like, right. How are you gonna go roast Denver secondary for ten for ten, and then get? one target the next week or three targets it was like, it's just the usage is yeah is out weird and uh, who knows what was going on over there and but in, regardless we don't need to talk about yeah. whether or not amari cooper is good or not we are all major amari cooper amari cooper respecters we've always liked amari cooper 
I'm glad you didn't say truth or there. I, I know that's where you were. I going. know solid Ex- respecter. Uh, and so I've I've been wanting him to get traded, but from the Raiders, here you it know? comes. Here it comes. But I mean, like now he's in Dallas. Yay! <laughs> like this is awesome. Question mark? Because Dallas. Dang it! Emoji you know? confused emoji. I guess it's cool. I guess anywhere's better than this. What he was doing. Uh, you are, but. At this point, you're like, it is Dallas, but now you got to use the crutch. They gave up a first, so now they got to target him. Sure. But he's got to learn the playbook, which he's come out and said is high school playbook. Way too easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> to learn. So I don't I don't think this is like, obviously, we want we wanted the trade for Amari Cooper. Everybody wanted the trade for Amari Cooper. Um, and, and yeah, you could see the Colts. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't think Dallas. Yeah, to the Colts would have been awesome. That's what for, I'm for sure. <laughs> um, but I just, I don't know how much. I don't know. I don't know how good Amari Cooper trade to Dallas will will be for him. Right. Maybe for the first couple of weeks. You've seen it with Josh Gordon, kind of how they've kind of figured it out uh, his, o- over the last couple of weeks. And his snap rate skyrocketed, but sure. to get there, he couldn't get any targets because he didn't know the playbook. And there's been much more difficult playbook been, over there. There's significant uh, disadvantages and advantages to either side of Josh Gordon and Amari Cooper and the different uh, trades and how they've they've gone. I think you got a Patriots playbook that's much more difficult. Sure. And and a uh, Cowboys playbook that is seemingly I don't know, but Amari Cooper seems to think it's it, he can learn it fairly easily and he's not worried about it. Multiple times um, he said the word easy. Uh, yeah, a lot of easy. So advantage, which might be part of the Cowboys problem. Advantage Amari Cooper. <laughs> But then you got, you know, Josh Gordon and the quarterback, which is Tom Brady, advantage Josh Gordon. Yeah, right. You yeah. have the room, which is filled with Belichick's and five Super Bowl rings and people who get it. Advantage. Advantage uh, Patriots and Josh Gordon. But then I think you have, uh, obviously, Josh Gordon has been and waiting for to be this one of the better receivers in the league, but it just nothing has kind of all clicked and, and came together at the same time for different reasons than Amari Cooper isn't clicking and coming together. Maybe the most part because he wasn't on the field. Right. Uh, well, and and because like Amari Cooper just seems like when he was coming out of college, he was a, a guy who was, was a character high, high character. High character. Uh, Hard break, worker. Obviously, the breakout high motor, age. High it, motor. Obviously, the breakout age is, <laughs> is extremely high because he came in and, and so he was young. crushing at a, at a young age. So you would think that, you know... S- Head wise, smarts wise, maybe Amari Cooper check mark to Josh Gordon's. Maybe not not saying that Josh Gordon isn't a smart guy, but maybe just isn't quite in the same uh, realm of football savvy and smarts and and wherewithal as Amari football Cooper. IQ, is. Football uh, IQ, yeah, and I'm not, could and, be and, and, lower. Right, we don't know. Right, we don't know. I don't speculate. I'm not, I'm not gonna leading the say witness, anything, but leading the witness, just to kind of put those two things together and coincide. And you've seen it take what four weeks now josh gordon had a pretty decent week this week yeah um and he's had he's he's injured he was injured via right. the trade uh so that could be part of it maybe he's not 100 percent doesn't have an explosion back good point you're getting two weeks of amari cooper on a buy for the raiders and now on a buy uh for the cowboys which bonus for amari to get healthy from the concussion bonus for amari to help learn this quoting him easier easy ish playbook simple yeah um and something he's been doing his whole life as it was something that he said and you know so i don't see that as being too much of a disadvantage but it might be a couple of weeks before amari is completely acclimated and you know you i don't think anybody ever is like oh there's a mid-season trade and i'm so excited for the guy who got traded without being like there's got to be a couple of weeks of lead time here before my guys ready to yeah. ascend where i think he is now do i think that amari cooper is going to be that elite wide receiver one that people were drafting him as a couple of years ago like that that third or fourth receiver off the board or even 10th receiver off the board probably not this season no not with Dak and not with that offense right it's not made to do that but I think you could see some nice wide receiver two numbers out of Amari for the back end of this season and you'll slowly saw him you know yeah they got they paid the first round pick for him uh, so you would like to think that they would feed him some targets um, so I'm thinking hopefully you see like five to seven, eight targets a game for a guy like Amari Cooper. Maybe it's not quite that off the rip, but I think it will get somewhere around there. And hopefully you're hoping for more of a 10 yeah, target kind of day say, for I, him. But to be realistic over the next couple of weeks, you would think kind of five to seven would be 
fantastic and could easily put him in a wide receiver two category because of his skill set. Um, and then what it really does for this team and the thing that I'm most excited about, I'm not excited if I have Amari Cooper, like obviously he's out of that situation um, and into a new situation and he's hopefully maybe excited about it and you didn't really know what was going on in, in uh, Oakland. That was a very strange situation, especially the way it all ended. We'll get to that in a second, but I think it's just a huge upgrade for this offense in general. Like you give Dak somebody who can be that alpha number one, throw the ball to, it makes the defense loosen up a little bit and not be able to necessarily stack eight guys in the box. You can try that for a minute and try to go solo on Amari here if you want to, or you can double Amari and you can actually get usage out of these wide receiver twos and threes that your team's filled with. Exactly. Um, and I saw, so I think that's the biggest benefit. I think Zeke benefits. I think Dak benefits. I think these other receivers around him should all benefit. The offense as a whole should be able to grow off of Amari and in the long term. Hopefully, closer to the end of the season, you'll start seeing Amari also benefiting from this move. I agree with that. I, I mean, I don't think there's any way this doesn't help the offense. I mean, obviously, there's people out here complaining about the Cowboys giving up the first round pick. And I mean, you can say that if nobody else wanted to give up a first, that they paid too much. But you, these are the same people that were complaining that the Cowboys didn't take a wide receiver in the first round this year. Yeah, you could have Calvin so, Ridley. Yeah, you 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 were they, you're, okay. The, a whole bunch of people were just complaining the Cowboys didn't use a first round pick on a wide receiver. Now they take one to still only twenty four years old and he's two time Pro Bowler. Right, like Jason just pointed out, Kenny Galladay. One year younger. He's 25. Yeah, he's old. About to be 25. Yeah, and we're so excited with Kenny Galladay because he's young, right? Right. So it's all it's all relative, and there's to each his own perspective on how they want to try to spin something. If nobody else will give up a first, then, yeah, maybe the Cowboys should have been trying to play the 2-2s game or whatever. But, like, it's, they're going into a bye, probably were up, a gun, up against a gun because in my, my perspective is – you should have tried to get him a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, the best time to do it is going into a buy. So they were like, "Well, if we don't do it now, maybe we don't do it." But again, trade this, deadline closing. Same in. thing we were talking. Yeah, the the same thing we we're talking about with the Jags. And if NFC East is wide open, right? That's so a, that's the Cowboys what, yeah. are like, "Hey, we got to make a move here." And yeah, you might have paid. You, there's a potential you could have got him for less. But who knows if the deal gets done? And you and the Cowboys don't necessarily know that somebody else isn't really knocking on the door of course after the trade happens everybody's like well we weren't going to give up a first but somebody could have been knocking on the door right. hindsight's to, 2020 you never again. know and the, and and as and, and as the cowboys they don't know either so well, they, what, and what a lot of fans and media they want to point to that oh well jerry already has done this this twice now and when he traded for uh roy williams roy williams and um joey galloway joey galloway and it didn't work out and you know maybe maybe it doesn't work out but He's at least making it, taking a shot here, and you can say whatever you want about Jerry Jones, but at least he's shooting his gun here. And right. there is, the, the division is wide open, and this offense does need a guy like this. And and, and maybe this catapults you uh, further down the line, and uh, you get to, again, see for the next year if, if you got a guy that you want to be your cornerstone of your franchise, which is what this you could have Zeke and Amari, and if they're balling out with this offensive line and, and you see some growth from Dak... It's a great trade. Well, you also get a chance to see Dak have a chance, have somebody to throw to. I heard somebody right. say Ryan that. Ryan Grant made Was a it great Ryan point. Grant saying yep. if you have to make a decision whether or not really soon you're going to pay Dak, and you might as well give him some Good quality. Point. You got to get you got to get a quality see guy for him to throw to to see if you want to put more money in Dak going forward. And then like you you know the Cowboys are going to spend that first round pick on a wide receiver next year. And then he's going to be a rookie, right? And then he's going to be a mini and rookie. Maybe camps. he's not any good. Hey, maybe right. he's not. Maybe he's not as good as Amari Cooper. So maybe well, he's never any good. Maybe he never catches a thousand yards in a season. Exactly. I have no problem with them giving up the first round pick next year. No way. to get Amari Cooper this year. Have a chance in a wide open MC, NFC East, and 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 that means a playoff berth, and anything can happen. Do does anybody think the Cowboys are going to go win championship? No, but their defense is a lot better than people give them credit for. Sure, they have a good running game. They got a quarterback who doesn't really turn it over a whole lot and can get first downs with his legs. And it and we've, and we've seen him be a pretty good quarterback with options to throw to. Right, and like you said, now Alan Hearns, who's nobody to speak of, goes doesn't have to be somebody to speak of. And Michael Gallup now, can. Now and Michael Gallup can come along a little bit and not have to Cole be Beasley can the guy that thing. everybody's looking at. If Amari can get Cole Beasley's targets, then I'm good with this trade. And Cole Beasley, <laughs> right. Cole Beasley can, yeah, exactly. Cole Beasley can move to chains. He just doesn't need to be your focus in your passing right. game. I would like to see Cole Beasley get in the end zone so we can steal his fing- uh, the uh, Jazz hands. Sure, he, he got in the end zone against the Jags twice. Did I think did did a had a had a dance. Yeah, he, he crushed it. Did he? Oh, I missed the dance. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't. 
you can, of course, everyone wants to sit back and and criticize and or 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 love it either way. But I've heard mostly criticism. Mostly about criticism. What's going How on horrible about. I like the train. I think I think it's a great it's a great move. Like you got to do something. Shoot, like I said, shoot your shot. Do something. And at this, you point, miss one hundred percent of the shots this, you never take. At this point, it's a, right. It's a really really good move for the Raiders as well. Right. I think because it's obviously the building's burning down and people are jumping out the window. You might as well get a first round pick on the way out. Yeah. I don't have a problem with yes. it for the Raiders. I mean, they you, got four first rounders. If, I don't like the way they're handling it. I mean, I don't. I don't necessarily like oh, the way that's they're not handling about it either. That. I'm but just saying, you got another first. Now you got tons of first round picks, and you got lots of capital. Yeah, and, and next on, year's a weak draft class. It's all about the 2020 well, class. There's, I mean, ton, there's some good wide receivers coming out. I'm just kidding. And, and uh, who who the hell knows what's going to happen in the 2020 or 2019? It's all about the next year. Though. Uh, it always is. But who knows what's going to happen in the 2019 draft class? And on top of that, like you're you were you're not paying Khalil Mack. And you're not paying Amari Cooper on the next go around. You just cleared his picking up his fifth round option. And now, you know, maybe you don't end up paying Derek Carr either. So now all of a sudden you got tons of money and tons of draft picks. I mean, do I love the way what they're doing and do I love how they're doing it? No, not necessarily. But Gruden's got complete autonomy of what's going on. This has got 10 years and a ton of money to do whatever he wants to do. I don't think he's going to have a full 10 years, but no, I mean, me not, not if he doesn't turn right. it around within two or three years of being in Vegas, he won't. But. This frustrates me because I told myself. I was going to do better. I can remember exactly where I was when I heard this, but I cannot remember which podcast it was that told me this. They there was no chance the Raiders could were ever going to pay Khalil Mack because they said Mark Davis is not that rich. Right. Like he's way. Did you hear this? Well, part? I read on Roto he's, World. He's way he's way. One of the, he's the poorest quote unquote yes, NFL. Ex- owners. Okay, exactly. I don't remember who said this, but he there. Basically, when you give if you give a give big old contract like that, and let's say you guarantee like eighty million or something like those big defensive guys get, you have to put a healthy percentage of that into an escrow account to guarantee that that money is going to be there because you guaranteed you were going to pay him. So Mark Davis can't afford to hand to put fifty million into a bank account that he can never touch again, plus be able to pay the rest of that thirty. I'm just using even numbers here, you know. So like. That's kind of where it was. Was he doesn't have he's he's the he's the poorest rich guy in the room, and he doesn't have the money to pay these guys. And that's kind of where this was going. And it's deflating for the franchise because if you can't keep up, you they it's, gave it's all, a, they, they gave all their money to John. This Gruden. is not the Oakland A's. You can't. This ain't how this works in yeah. the NFL. I mean, obviously parity is awesome, and you can be bad one year. Every what is it? Five or six teams make. Don't make the play or five to new, new teams. teams make the playoffs yeah. every year. I mean, this is great, but if you don't have the money to keep stars, you're not going to be good and good for long. So that I just want, I wish I could give some yeah, credit. I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't love, remember I don't who love said that they it. traded Khalil Mack away. I don't love that they traded Amari Cooper away. But if that's what your plan is, and that's kind of what your plan was all along, then I'm, you know, I'm not that bet, upset about it. Oh, I bet I'd you much could, rather sign Khalil Mack. You got to sure. be able to get to the passer. I bet you could go. Sure, get, but I mean, if it's if if you're going to pay him that much money and it's going to be three years before you're relevant you're kind of pissing away that true that exactly money that you're no doubt and if you can get two first rounders to not right be, you can't let him walk in free agency right you're not going to let him walk so might as well get the twos and that's what i mean for amari if you can't pay amari because it won't be long, next year this time you're going to be looking at paying him a lot of money and the people that say he's not any good are the same people that says you got to pay him a lot of money soon so like obviously you know he's good enough to demand a decent contract so i I like it for the Raiders and I like it for the Cowboys and the people that say the Cowboys pay too much. It's all like I it, mean, you pay. First Amari, of all, you pay a Amari little premium to your, get a player. Amari could be your your number one receiver for the next six years and and completely dominate. Like, yeah, there's that, that that's not even close to out of the realm of possibilities. Agreed. And you and let's not talk. Do do you really want me to go down the list of the first round wide receivers that are no good? Right, I actually made a list of that like the last three years. Is that's the first what I'm round saying. Like that's receivers. You could buy. Are, you could spend money. You could spend that first round pick months from now that cannot help you win the division now, and it could be a bad player. Josh Doxson, Corey Coleman, Brashad Perriman, Devontae Parker, uh, Kevin White, and, and and half of those are injuries, and it's not about the player. And I just like I mean, Kevin uh, Casey will talk about all day long and he's absolutely right the position in the but you can't help who drafts you you can't help which offensive coordinator you're looking at look at jared golf with the rams now versus when the when um fisher, look at, fisher look at moved robert out. woods with the bills, bills. And with the rams yeah yeah look at brandon cooks right now like he was nobody wanted brandon cooks he's 
crushing it. Like Cooper Cup, everyone shat on Cooper Cup. If he went somewhere else, everyone would probably be like, "See, I told you so." He ran us four seven four forty. But he, four, but seven, four, but he went to the Rams. Yeah. And if Coop, now it's like shut your mouth. Now Cooper nobody Cup's cares what of. his forty second right. yard dash was. Exactly. If Cooper Cup would have been drafted by the Raiders, you wouldn't even know his name anymore. Back to this point, I was trying to make. I couldn't get in there. Sorry, Jay Wayne. I bet the Raiders Floor could, yours. could uh, borrow some money from somebody. I'm, I'm sure that somebody would give the damn Raiders some money to keep some damn players around. Uh, yeah, I bet they like could figure that out. But the Las Vegas will give them as much money as they need. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> so the fact that out there a couple of years, that Davis is is broke or poor. Ah, not 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 buying it. But oh, you got to buy that part. But yes, I agree. I can buy I heard it to it, an extent. I thought the same thing. I was like, well, shouldn't you get a loan from some one of your buddies and then give them a partial interest in the right. team? And so when you are, if That's you can they, get good, you know your value, in Gruden. right? You know your, you know your value goes up when you start winning, right? And boys you are like, you this, make, thing, this thing's gonna fold up in five years. So let's give them ten years. We'll give them part of the team. <laughs> you, you think, you think, you, you think Robert Kraft's net worth hadn't tripled since Brady and Belichick came around and started winning Super Bowls? Like that's how this works. So somebody gave them the boys the Patriots. They're like, here, you want them? You can have them. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are awful. <laughs> anyway. So would you? Uh, we're, we're really up against it here. This is going to be the longest free show in a while. Uh, but I feel like we should put some value here to to Mari Cooper. I know you were saying off air that if you're not a big Amari Cooper believer, that maybe you should sell right now. Right, and then obviously, much like we're talking, I talked about Rashad Penny to lead this thing off. I believe in Amari Cooper. I'm not going to be the guy who's trying to sell Amari Cooper or ever was trying to sell Amari Cooper. Right. I've always been. Uh, I've I've saw. I did my evaluation. I like Amari Cooper. If he could just get in the right situation and be consistently targeted, I think he'll be a pro bowler year in, year out. Uh, but if you're that guy who hates uh, Amari Cooper, maybe this thing isn't isn't great through the rest of the season. Maybe he's more of like that wide receiver three, fringe wide receiver two for, this, for the rest of the season, but does really help the Cowboys out because regardless, I think it helps this offense. you got to worry may, about Amari Cooper. Maybe fantasy points-wise, it's not the best the best ever. So right now I feel like you're at an, an uptick of value and his name's in a lot of people's mouths and there could be a lot of things going a lot of different ways. So if you wanted to get rid of him, I think now's the time to capitalize on if, if you're not into him to maybe try to capitalize <laughs> you're not into him selling uh, the Amari stock. I mean, I, I can see that you should, yeah, maybe hold on and see what he does, but it could be inconsistent like it is now, and then he's right back to. Well, let's just say, let me, let me, before we get off of Amari Cooper, he, we talked about the two good years he had to start. And then last year, before, so this year's been bad. Last but, year? Well, I know, wait, Dar- I, I, I know. But last, this year has been two games of wide receiver, like 10 targets, 11 targets, called everything, came his way, awesome. And Probably a couple was games. The wide receiver number one. Couple games of uh, uh, awful. The actual first one. Couple games of awful. But then last year was the season where we said every somebody even the Oakland Raiders. I think Derek room, Carr said if any other receiver or most any other receiver was playing with what Amari Cooper was dealing with last year, they wouldn't have played. He wouldn't even have been on the field, right? Which would have been good for your roster on your lineup because you wouldn't have had that sit start problem with Amari Cooper every week because it was terrible having him in your on your in your starting lineup not doing well. Not to mention Derek Carr. Broke also, his back. also injured. Right. He broke his leg and then he broke his back and all that good stuff. So I just, it's, we are only halfway through his fourth season. The first two were Pro Bowls doing things that nobody's ever done before at his age. The third one, he could have, he just smell what, he should have been on the IR, sounds like. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know exactly what was wrong with him, but I've, I've did, I read somewhere was a, a big, quote from somebody on that team saying that. Most other people wouldn't have been on the field playing with what Amari Cooper was dealing with. So her, Which hurt that all speaks year to whether or not he's dedicated to the game and, and playing tough. this game and and wanting to. So be. hurt all year, and then this year, awful. Not to mention Derek Carr's back injury. Awful year. game, right. awful game, great game, awful game, awful game, great game, and it, no, the awful games were not lack of. It's, if you got ten targets and two catches, maybe something's up. Right. But right. if you got three targets and one catch, it's not. And your just fault. the whole like we I, we alluded to it when we were talking about how the trade went down like just the whole way that Gruden takes the guy off the practice field doesn't say anything to the team doesn't even address him right basically players find out on their phones right I mean just the whole situation was weird and maybe Amari was who I don't know what the hell was going on over there nobody does right I mean so, not a, not any of us anyway so, so it's just I don't a, have sources. A, sort of a weird situation yeah. uh, but hopefully obviously you're in Dallas now so the situation could get even weirder but you would hope that 
You paid this guy. You've seen at times this X receiver in this offense get peppered with targets. Sure. A la Des Bryant, seeing plenty of targets for a while, and then while you not saw, ever with Dak though, really. No, not with Dak, but while Dak, while Des was maybe quote unquote declining, and the and they were maybe he wasn't the receiver who they wanted him to be. They started spreading it around more, and then inevitably you saw him get released. But there was points in times where there was just targets funneled that way sure which you could easily see that going amari's way and maybe the people who said well you paid a first for him so maybe they're going to just pump him with targets hopefully so obviously but i think it just does so much for this offense even if you don't pump targets his way and he's more at the five to eight targets a game kind of deal for the rest of the year for the rest of the year it's obviously up in the up in the air i would imagine towards the end of the year by the time they get something worked out he's probably working if, let me tell you if he the should cowboys be working are rolling, eight or nine targets it's gonna a game. yeah it's gonna be a higher target volume than that and if they're if the cowboys are starting to win and put things together it's gonna be because amari cooper is doing his thing let's do it i'd i'd, I'd give up a first to try and go get amari cooper i don't know if that might do it i'd give you a first for him if i needed receivers we're I talking mean, in fantasy football, yeah. not in not in Dallas Cowboys. I mean, I'd ab- absolutely give an NFL first. Round and, yeah, I, I agree too. There's nothing like again, uh, even with fantasy dr- draft picks, it's still no guarantee. You're right. at least at fifty fifty. Right. At, well, let's at put it minimum. This way. But if you're in the NFL draft, I mean, Jesus, how many first round picks bust every single year? Right. Just how at, many? Not even receivers. Right? How right. many rookies are going to be called in the rookie draft of your league next year before Amari Cooper's name would be called? Not too many. I don't think too many. So I wouldn't have a problem giving up a first, especially if it's supposed to be. Yeah, there late. might there might if, be a one or two who land in a really good position after they get drafted, a la someone like the Rams. Well, Cooper's 24 now, and somebody's going to come out, and it's going to be good, and he's 20 years old. And from Iowa State Hope is a monster. 6'4", 6'4", six, four, four, six, yeah. four, 220, and he could be awesome. So there's going to be that uh, that next generation awesome boy, guy. boy, Debo. Debo's a beast. I don't, um, I don't, I don't, I don't get caught. I don't look at the uh, – it's – I don't know who's coming out and who's not coming out. I don't, I don't I'm very surprised that my some people think that Debo Samuel's and Brian Edwards will be first round picks in the NFL, and I just I don't know about all that. Um, second rounders for sure, but first rounders. That's a I lot. don't think Clemson's. I think you're maybe a year or two away before the, you got a crop of guys who are coming, but they're not they're not coming out I th- anytime soon that are going to be first maybe first rounders. Right. Uh, yeah, Higgins, I know you got a freshman that's awesome. Higgins is. Uh, I don't think he's quite ready. And then Etienne, Etienne. Uh, well, that's backs. Right. Um. Well, that's what we. Well, we're talking about receivers, right? Yeah, now. right. So mid to late first for Amari Cooper can't hurt. Can't. Wouldn't, no, wouldn't I would hurt definitely my feelings do that for sure. But obviously, uh, you know, you don't have to start out how to begin with. See what what can happen. I know there's a bunch of other good receivers. There's a Colorado. I know Colorado's got a really good receiver. Uh, well, it's a receiver heavy class. There's only. If you look at the yeah. DLF Devi rankings, it's a ton of wide receivers at the top of the sure. 19. And I'm class. sure I'm blanking on some of the really good ones right now, but I'm I'm not. That's not my focus. At this right. Not right this second. December. I'll tell you. It's who not the good week 17 are. yet. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that'll wrap up today's show. I hope yeah. you enjoyed midseason meatloaf. Oh, how could you not? Right. Um, if you're on any. <laughs> Maybe we'll go out to a little bat out of hell. I don't know what we're going to go out to yet, and we'll figure that out uh, here in a second. But uh, if you're if you're on iTunes, please give us that five star review. Any of your platforms of choice, hit subscribe. Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. If you're on YouTube, please go hit subscribe. Help us out a bunch. Uh, we're, we go live on Sunday mornings. Uh, about 70% of the time we've been going live on YouTube. Sometimes we just yeah. do it just for our patrons if we don't have enough time. We got time. things going on. Yeah, it's it's tough. But we have been, if you hit the little uh, alarm notification, you'll be notified of any time we do post a video or go live. So check in on uh, Sunday morning for that. And uh, obviously we've, we've told you a little bit about Patreon. If you're looking for a whole extra hour, hour and a half worth of show, head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Patreon. You can also get there from our website, theffdynasty.com, uh, which is a cool place to check out all of our content. You can search for any of the players we've it's a, uh, broke down. Satchel for our things. Right. There's a cool forum. Vintage satchel. Get your questions Briefcase. in there. Uh, and, <laughs> Not a uh, But really, Patreon's where it's at. We're about to go talk for another hour plus about all the questions that we have had on the community page, going right. back and forth, helping guys with their teams Especially and trades. Especially if you're from Charlotte. <laughs> He's got his Carlos voice over there. We got a buddy Carlos that no one knows what you're what you're talking about. No, over there. I know. I'm and just uh, <laughs> muttering things. They've tuned out already. Anyways, yeah, we're giving them the the end of episode spiel. The sh- but uh, 
We're glowing like the metal on the edge of a knife. We are. Pay your pay your dues. Pay your homage to the greats. Meatloaf was one of the greats. He loves fantasy football. We love him. Shout out to the meat. Take us out. He's a vegetarian. He is a vegetarian. <laughs> Curveball. Such a random, Curveball. Such a random fact there. <laughs> All right, meat. Take us out. Thanks for listening to Married to the Game. <laughs>